are listening to the Art of Homeschooling podcast, where we help parents cultivate creativity and connection at home. I'm your host, Jean Miller, and here on this podcast, you'll find stories and inspiration to bring you the confidence you need to make homeschooling work for your family. Let's begin. Welcome to episode 70 here on the podcast, and today we're talking about failure. Not an easy topic, I know. I couldn't decide what to call this episode, but in the end, I went with failure is a part of the learning process. Want to know why? Because I think this quote explains it well. I'm not sure who said this. But the quote goes like this, there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. So good. That quote invites us to get comfortable with mistakes and even failure. Okay, a bit of vulnerability here just to kick things off. I find it hard to be embarrassed. I don't want others to see me make mistakes and I want to be liked. I'm a people pleaser. Well, these days I call myself a recovering people pleaser because I work hard every day at moving beyond that. I've discovered that people pleasing has really held me back in so many aspects of my life. Plus, it's exhausting to try to figure out what others want you to do all of the time. So I decided to give that up years ago. But the truth is, there are even deeper beliefs and fears underneath all of the people pleasing. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to go into all the details of my life here, but here's what I want you to know. A fear of failure is rooted in a lack of self-compassion. That's what I've discovered, that getting to know myself and love myself was the first step in getting more comfortable with failure. The hardest thing you'll ever do is to learn to love yourself, mistakes, failures, flaws, and all. Wondering what this might have to do with homeschooling, with teaching and learning? We'll get to that, I promise. But for now, I want you to consider that your own journey of self-discovery directly affects how you show up for your children. So a little bit of my background, I was raised to think that how I appeared, how other people, what other people's perceptions of me are, that that was the most important thing to consider above anything else. And it's taken me years to unlearn all of this, to learn to trust myself while at the same time caring less about others' perceptions of me. This week I've been that I've been putting this podcast episode together. I've been watching the Winter Olympics. I love watching the Olympics and also women's professional tennis. Those two things are really my jam, something I just love indulging in. And there's just something about the dedication, skill, and courage that I so admire and want to cheer on. It's it's not unusual to see me crying while I'm watching these events. Just the courage. I personally, I can't imagine competing in front of millions of viewers and making a mistake. It's kind of funny, isn't it? Odd to admit that. But it's the truth, falling on the ice or double faulting a serve in a big match, that just feels so challenging to me. It makes me cringe. And yet every one of these elite athletes has to be willing to risk that in order to make it to where they are. We all have insecurities and doubts, feeling like we're not doing it right about many things, right? 
And interestingly, I find with so many homeschooling parents I talk to, they're afraid that they're doing it wrong sometimes so afraid that they freeze up not knowing what to do next. Has that ever happened to you? I think that's why we purchase another curriculum and then another curriculum because we don't know what to do. We certainly don't want to do it wrong. And we think the next thing we buy will give us the answer. But honestly, We just have to be willing to make the mistakes. We need to get comfortable with failure because we can't make progress if we're not willing to make mistakes, if we're not willing to just try something out. That's what's really holding us back. And we rob ourselves of an incredible learning opportunity or experience when we try so hard to avoid failure. But here's the reassurance that I want you to take away from this episode. Failure is important for learning. It's part of the learning process. That's right, failure. Why, you may ask? Well, I have three reasons to share with you. One, failure helps our children develop skills of determination and perseverance. Two, failure builds self-esteem. I know it seems ironic, but when we first fail and then get something, we feel so good about it. And this has more of an impact than we pick when we pick up something easily. And third, failure helps children learn that it's okay to make mistakes and that this is a normal part of the learning process. It helps us to embrace failure. As it turns out, mistakes are integral to the learning process. Failure not only improves information recall because we have to practice it over and over again, but we also have this memory of how we couldn't do it and now we can do it. But it also helps develop critical thinking too because we usually have to problem solve when we've made a mistake. And, and rethink how to approach it from whatever it is we're doing from a different angle. That's how children become skilled problem solvers, how all of us become skilled problem solvers. So don't forget to give your children the gift of permission to fail so that they can have more opportunities to learn. Failure can also teach us so many things about ourselves, kind of like a little bonus. So here is a story, uh, a little story that I want to share with you. I'm learning to play the piano. Well, really, I'm relearning to be more accurate. So when I was seven, eight, nine years old, I took piano lessons. And even though we had a piano at our house, I'd walk two doors down to Mrs. Griffith's house to practice on her baby grand piano. Somehow that beautiful, sleek piano inspired me to play my best. Plus, Mrs. Griffith loved hearing me play and always had fresh baked chocolate chip cookies for me. So just recently, I started playing the piano again. Now, mind you, this is 50 years later. We've had a piano in our living room all these years. All three of our children learned to play the piano, but I only used it occasionally to tap out a tune, uh, the tune to a song that I was learning to sing. So just last week, I got out my daughter's Suzuki piano books, and I'm starting on book one. I've mastered one song so far, and my husband asked me to play it for him. And you know what I did? Every time I made a mistake, I would stop and say, uh, or I'd say, wait, that's wrong. And at one point, he, I even said, uh, why can't I get this right? So Brian said, "Hun, it's all right. Just keep playing. And those are the exact words that I used to say to our kids when they made mistakes on piano. I'd say, just keep going. 
but in a much gentler voice, of course, than I was using for myself. For some reason, even today, I feel like I have to try really hard not to make mistakes. Like I'm supposed to get it right the first time, probably because of my upbringing and needing to appear so well put together combined with my desire for things to turn out well. But interestingly, there was a direct correlation between me learning to love myself and being willing to make mistakes. So my message to you is this, you might want to work on self-compassion at the same time you're getting more comfortable with failure. So there are definite benefits for ourselves. Like I said, kind of like a bonus. Failure can teach us so many things about ourselves. And here are just a few of them. The more experience we have with failure, the stronger and more resilient we become. Failure teaches us to learn to laugh at ourselves. And over time, failure helps us to build our confidence. And that is ultimately what we want. Remember, there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. Now, of course, in order to get comfortable with failure, we need to embrace this vulnerability. So what does that look like? I think it's mostly a willingness, right? A willingness to just open the door, be willing to be seen as we are. Because in the end, getting comfortable with failure is truly a gift, giving us the opportunity to learn, to be humble, and admit that there's still so much out there that we don't know. I hope you found your own little tidbit of inspiration in this episode. My goal is to offer you compassion and empowerment so you can embrace failure as a learning and growing experience, both for yourself and for your children. So I don't know who needed to hear this today, but maybe it was you. Thanks so much for listening. You can find the show notes for this episode at artofhomeschooling.com slash episode 70. That's all for today, my friend. But here's what I want you to remember. Rather than perfection, let's focus on connection. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Art of Homeschooling podcast. Mm-hmm.